Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning. We're glad you are joining us today on this beautiful day. Just got one quick announcement. Don't forget, uh, you can give your tithes and offering online, or you can drop it by the church or mail it however you would like. We have an exciting announcement coming up. Uh, just be looking for it today, later on on our website, and our church website, and on the app. Uh, we're going to do something where we can join together next Saturday, so you will hear more about that this afternoon. Uh, we just want to get together as much as possible and let each other know that we are missing each other and we love each other. We miss having church in the church building, but we know that that's not what church is all about. Amen? <laughs> so while people are getting set, I just want to read a scripture this morning before we enter into the presence of God today. Psalms 145 says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to tell the generations to come, we might have gone through a pandemic, we might be in a situation we never thought possible, but I want a generation to know that we can still have a wonderful working power of God to move through your service and where you're sitting in your home, you can still receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in a heavenly language. You can still be baptized in his wonderful name because his, his blood is still shed on Calvary and it's still flowing today. I want to just bless his name today. So wherever you're at, why don't you get with somebody if you're in a room with somebody. Why don't you just take them by the hand and agree today. I'm going to do whatever I can to get into the presence of an almighty God because there is something that God wants to do today in your life. I believe that with all my heart that it doesn't matter where you're at. When the power of God's word goes forth, his presence wants to do something supernatural in your life this morning. So turn to somebody and tell them, God wants to do something in my life today. And God wants to do something in your life today. So I'm going to create an atmosphere right here in my home, in my living room, wherever I'm at today. And I'm going to give God praise and do his wonderful name. Because I want every generation to come to know that God is still the same today as he was yesterday. He's still the God of the Acts Church as he is today. Amen. God bless you. Let's worship God together.
days like today, I can still feel the power and the joy of God's spirit inside of his heart and life. Amen. Why don't you, wherever you're at, why don't you just begin to give him praise this morning? Just begin to give him a hand clap of praise right there inside of your home. Let him know who he is, is great and mighty and worthy of all the praise and glory. Are you thankful for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? God's spirit that came out and it filled your heart and life and it brings joy and peace and strength. I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for his presence today. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you at home, but I feel the presence of God in this place today. Amen. Sometimes it's kind of hard to flow in the spirit of God when there's hardly anybody here. But I feel the presence of Almighty God in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want to rush. I don't want to. I know we're on kind of a time frame, but I don't want the presence of God to be rushed in your home. I don't want to be rushed here today because I know there is somebody that needs a touch from him today. Somebody that needs a renewing of his spirit and his power upon your heart and life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Maybe it's been a while since you felt the joy and the freedom of the Holy Ghost coming inside your heart and life. And you've had a burden that you've carried for far too long. I'm here to tell you this morning, the power of the Holy Ghost wants to bring freedom into your heart and life. It wants to bring deliverance in your life today. It wants you to feel His joy and His spirit once again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, right now, reach out and touch every heart, every life that's listening this morning, every soul that's watching here today, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost begin to deal inside of them today, God. Let the power of your Spirit fall upon every person that is in and under the sound of my voice today, God. We need your power. We need the Holy Ghost. We need a renewing of your spirit upon our lives today, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost today. I'm thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost inside of my heart and life. Not every day is perfect. Not everything goes as I planned. But when the trials and tests of life come my way, I have the Spirit of God living inside of me that gives me hope of eternal life, that brings joy and peace in the midst of my troubles and trials. You might be thinking, what in the world are you talking about, pastor or preacher? Maybe you're just flipping through and you run across this video. I want to preach about the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost in your heart and life today. You turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 19. We're going to read verses 1 through 7, a very familiar portion of Scripture. Acts 19, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. Let me tell you, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost inside your heart and life this morning. You need salvation today. And it only comes through the name.
name of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed on Calvary. You need the Holy Ghost this morning. It's your only saving grace today. The power of God's spirit inside your heart and life. Amen. What are you talking about? What is the Holy Ghost? Well, to understand that, you've got to understand the Word of God. That's why it's important that you pick up the Word of God yourself and you begin to study it and you begin to read it. Don't just listen to this preacher, but get in the Word of God. Hopefully by the end of this message you will understand what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is and what it can do in your heart and life. This portion of Scripture is kind of like when you read the back of a book. You're just wanting to understand kind of synopsis of what's going on, but then you have to go back and begin to read from the beginning to understand what that one portion of the book that they're talking about. That's what I want to do. To do that, you've got to understand one thing, that God's Word is perfect in every way, that it was written by men that were spoken upon by the God Himself. So you have to go back to the beginning where it all started in Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Let me tell you, where there is nothing, where there is emptiness, where there is darkness, there's something about it when the Spirit of God begins to move upon you. There becomes a light inside of your heart and life. What was once dead is now alive. What was dark is now full of light. Because Jesus Christ is alive and well inside of this world today. And His Spirit is coming down and it wants to move inside your heart and life today. The Bible simply says the Spirit of God moved. Not the spirits of God, but the Spirit of God moved. If you read further, you will see the words of God spoke and creation began to come to life. Everything that God spoke, the trees, the firmament, the grass, the animals, everything that we see in our world today... God spoke it into existence because His Spirit came and it spoke life into a darkness. It needs your spirit to come inside. He's wanting your spirit to come inside of this place. He's wanting to come inside of your life today. Where there is a moving of the Spirit, life begins to happen inside of you. Anytime that you see the words... Written in the scripture of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the same thing. We're talking about the Spirit of God coming down and touching our hearts and lives. Don't let anybody tell you there's a difference between the Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit. It's all the Spirit of God. We must understand from our reading today. That without the moving of God's Spirit in the earth, the Word had at that point only brought forth something that was without form and void and full of darkness. Before the Spirit of God moved, there was only darkness. We must understand at the beginning of this message or this sermon... The fact that there was nothing until the Spirit of God began to move inside of this world. It's the principle I want to get inside of you today. I want you to understand that no matter how good we think we are, how well we think we're living our life, or how well we think we understand the Word of God, Unless the Spirit of God comes down and it fills your heart and life and you begin to speak with a heavenly language with the Spirit, the Spirit of God coming and living inside your heart and life, your heart and life, we are full of darkness and void in our life. We need the moving of God's Spirit to come and give us life. 
without the moving of God's spirit inside of your heart and life, there is only death and destruction inside of your life. There could have been a whole earth and a whole heaven built but if there was no moving of God's spirit it would have just been void and darkness. Inside of your life you can build all kinds of things. You can build wealth. You can build a family. You can build whatever you set your hands to but without the spirit of God living inside your heart and life it is all void and darkness inside your life that's why so many people strive for things and they try to fill their life with so many things but it only brings sadness and destruction because they need the presence of almighty God to fill their heart and life they need the spirit of God to come down and speak inside of their hearts and lives Let me take it a step farther. You can say that you're living for God all your life. But if you never allow that spirit to come down and speak into your life, you need to find an altar of repentance and be buried in his name and baptism and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in a heavenly language this morning. Christianity is void without the Spirit of God. It's just another social gathering. It's just a time that we can get together and fellowship with one another. But there's something about it when we gather together. We begin to clap our hands and we begin to magnify the King of Kings and we allow His Spirit to come down and begin to move inside of your heart and life. And there's some of you in your room right now that you felt the Spirit of God move down and it begins to bring the joy and the presence of His Spirit inside of it. That's why sometimes when we lift our hands, we begin to cry. That's why sometimes when we feel the Spirit of God, we begin to dance and shout because it's the Spirit of God coming and living inside of our hearts and life and touching us hear me today you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost inside your heart and life you need to be filled with God's spirit this morning if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost you need to receive it right where you're at this morning we read in Genesis 1 and two, where the Spirit of God moved upon the waters of the deep. Another place in time that I would like to stop is Genesis 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all things, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy words shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee thou shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And you can read the story prior to this reading. We find Joseph in a pit, sold into slavery by his own brothers. We find him in prison, falsely accused of his crimes. We find him in a desperate situation. All of this happened because the Spirit of God was upon him. We know that he was led by the Spirit of God and God's Spirit spoke into him. 
No matter how dark the situation was, he allowed the Spirit of God to move upon his heart and life. And the Spirit of God always led him to something greater. Let me tell you, in your heart and life, you might be struggling with something. You might feel like you're in a dark place. But when you allow the Spirit of God to move upon you, he will take you from that pit and raise you up. He will bring you out of that darkness. He will set you in places you never thought possible in your heart and life. He will open doors for you you never thought possible because you allow the spirit of God to come and live inside your heart and life you allow the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you in your life all you need this morning is what Joseph had and that is the power of God's Spirit manifesting in your life. You need the power of God's Spirit inside of you every day. When you wake up in the morning, I challenge you just to ask God, God, come down and fill me with your Spirit once again. Let your Spirit reign freely in my life today. I want God's Spirit to come and touch your heart and life. And maybe it's been a long time since you felt the freedom of God's Spirit inside your heart and life. Let me tell you, His Spirit never left you. His hand has never left you. Just like Joseph, he had to go through some things. He had to go into the prison. He had to be set down in a pit where his brothers left him to die. Now, can you imagine how he felt personally? Being deceived by his brothers, being sold into slavery by his own flesh and blood. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you face. God's spirit still wants to move in your heart and life. I know there are probably many under the sound of my voice that are dealing with things inside your heart and life. You've built up walls because of things somebody said or somebody did or situations that's come arrive in your life and you just built up this wall inside of you because of the anger and the hurt that happened to you. Let me tell you, I understand words hurt people. People can say some awful things to you. People can put you down in ways you never thought possible. But in all that, God's Spirit still wants to rise up inside of you. He wants to raise you up out of that pit. He wants to put you in heavenly places. He wants to open doors where there seems no way. But it's only going to come when we allow God's Spirit to speak into us and speak through us and let His power and His Spirit be first and foremost inside of our lives. God's Spirit wants to come and fill your heart and life this morning. Somebody might say, well, I'm a believer. It's more than just believing who Jesus is. I don't want to offend anybody, but I have to preach the Word of God and the truth of God's Word. It takes more than just believing in Jesus Christ. It's more than just saying, I accept Him as my Savior. Mark 16 and 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. You say, well, preacher, what's that talking about? New tongues. In the original Greek, it means a language not learned by natural means. You see, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost is a supernatural experience between you and God Almighty. That's when His Spirit comes down and He begins to speak through your life and He begins to wash your soul clean and take away every bit of sin inside your heart and life. It's not something that you can practice. It's not something that you can just conjure up. But it's the Spirit of God coming inside your heart and life when you finally say, God, I'm a sinner. I want your Spirit to come in and live inside my heart and life. I surrender every part of my heart, my soul, my mind to you, Jesus Christ. And I want your Spirit Spirit to come and live inside of me today, God. I need you this morning, Jesus. We need to receive His Spirit this morning. Is it any wonder why we find Jesus telling His followers, 
in Luke 24, 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high. But here's the dilemma of the church. Here's the dilemma of Christianity today. Here's where the controversy begins in some hearts and lives. Here's where some people begin to pick up a word of division against each other. Here's where we can make the biggest mistakes of our lives. Is that we don't tarry for the Holy Ghost. We don't want to take what it we don't want to do what it takes to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible simply says that it's the gift of the Holy Ghost. But there are some things that we have to do before we can receive that gift. The thing that we struggle with more than anything in life is admitting that we're wrong. Just ask anybody in this place. Just turn to your neighbor at home. Turn to your loved one at home and tell them, you're wrong and I'm right. And see what happens. Maybe you shouldn't do that because you might just get in an argument and walk away from this message. Because there's something about our human nature that we don't want to say we're wrong. We don't want to say that we need help. That's why we men argue with Google GPS when it's saying, make a right-hand turn, make a right-hand turn right here, and we're still questioning, I don't think that's the right way to go. I know there's an easier way. I know there's a shortcut. I mean, how in the world are we arguing with a satellite that can see everything on the world? But yet we do because we don't want to admit we're wrong. And we will not admit it to our wives when we're driving that we're lost. Me and my wife took a trip to Savannah, Georgia. And if you've ever been there, it's confusing how to get around that town. Because every one of those squares and blocks and parks all look exactly the same. We were trying to find a certain location. And I was like, I know it's around this block. I know it's around this block. And I'm driving around the same block over and over. And my wife's like, no, I think it's a few blocks over that way. He's like, no, it's right here. I know it's right here. That house, it's right here. And guess what? I was wrong. Every one of those blocks looked exactly the same. But the Bible simply says it's the gift of the Holy Ghost. But the hardest thing that we have to do is to say that I'm a sinner. The hardest thing for this old man is to bow a knee and to admit that I'm a sinner and I need something more than myself. As the musicians come today, my friend... Once you find that altar of repentance in your life, you will receive the greatest thing that you've ever experienced in your life. And that is the gift of the Holy Ghost with God's Spirit coming and living inside your heart and life. You need the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. That's why Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is to come upon you. The only way that you can live a victorious life is wherever you're at this morning to bow a knee at an altar. An altar is wherever you decide Say, God, I'm a sinner without you. 
I'm lost without you, Jesus. God, wash me. Make me white as snow, God. God, begin to remove every wickedness of my life. God, help me to live according to your word. God, let your forgiving blood cover me today. And let me tell you, my friend, when you truly find that place at an altar of repentance in your life, there will be no hesitation. There will be no tarrying. There will be something that will come down inside of you. And the Spirit of God will begin to move upon your heart and life. And you will begin to speak in a heavenly language that you've never spoke before. That is the power of God's Spirit coming and living inside of a heart and life. Somebody that's crying out to God. God, I need you this morning. I'm challenging you today. Wherever you're at, wherever you're going through, just remind Him that you're a sinner today. Day and allow the power of the Holy Ghost to come and let His Spirit speak into your heart and life. You say, well, preacher, I've done too much. I, I've, I've done way too much things in my life. Need I remind you of Saul of Taurus? We know him better as the Apostle Paul. But he hated the name of Jesus. He went everywhere coming against those that believed in the name of Jesus. He did unspeakable things to the church. He arrested the saints. He destroyed churches. He created a dread and a fear all across that land. But one day, he had an encounter with God Almighty. And it brought him to his knees. And God blinded him. And it was there that he realized he was a sinner. And God came down and he touched his heart and life. And the Spirit of God moved upon him. And he got up from that place a different man because the Spirit of God spoke to him and spoke through him that day. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life. It doesn't matter what you're addicted to today. It doesn't matter the things that you struggle with in your life. It doesn't matter anything that is binding you today. I'm telling you, God's Spirit wants to come and He wants to live inside your heart and life. Just let the Spirit of God begin to move upon you. And the way that you do that is just simply raise Raise your hands and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm a lonely sinner today, and I want that spirit to come and minister to me. I want the spirit of God to flow through me today. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about coming to an altar of repentance this morning. And experience the greatest experience you could ever have in life. And that is God's Spirit coming and filling your heart and life. And speaking in a heavenly language. But it doesn't just stop at a one-time experience. You can wake up every day and receive the joy of His Spirit. There's something about it. Just the initial outpouring of God's Spirit coming inside your heart and life. It's just the beginning. That's why we can shout. That's why I can dance. That's why I can clap my hands and say, Thank you, Lord, for what I'm going through because I have your Spirit living inside of me. It brings a joy. It brings an excitement into my heart and life. That's when I can sing about Him and I can feel the presence presence of his spirit come and he begins to lift me up and carry me through my struggles and trials in our text this morning the scripture says he said unto them have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid his hands upon them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Let me tell you, all you need to do is just bow your knee at an altar of repentance and say, God, I want to believe in your name. I want the infilling of your spirit this morning. And right where you're at this morning, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So I challenge you today as they begin to play and sing this morning.
we're going to pray that God begins to touch your heart and life today. And I don't know who you are or where you're at or what you've been going through, but I'm telling you this morning, if you find an altar of repentance, God will come down right now, right where you're at, and he will begin to let his spirit flow through you today. And you will begin to lift your hands and begin to speak in a heavenly language today. God, right now, reach down and touch every heart and life. Let's listen to these words today, oh God. God, you see the hearts and lives of those that are choking you today, oh God. God, I bow my knee at an altar today, God. God, I don't want to show what you have done for me, God. Wash me, today, so I just know. God, let your spirit begin to move to every heart and life of those that are listening. God, you see those that need a renewal of your spirit today, God. God, let your spirit begin to flow through them today, God. God, let them lift their hands and begin to speak in the heavenly language, oh God. As the Holy Ghost begins to minister to them today, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your spirit today, God. God, let your spirit rain down upon every soul that prays today. to come and fill your heart and life today. Or maybe it's been a long time since you've had the Spirit of God move upon you. Maybe you're not living where you should be. Let me tell you, that Spirit's never left you. It's just waiting on you this morning. preach and like to speak about the goodness of God and his love but that scripture tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever Jesus Christ never changes his love for you has never changed what happens is we change has to be a decision made inside of this human life he's not going to just come down and move upon you without your reaching for him this morning my friend don't let the devil bring condemnation to your life don't let him say you've done too much or you've gone too far there's nothing that you can do that God will not 
wrap his arms of forgiveness around you and lift you up and renew his spirit inside your heart and life. But you've got to reach for him today. Is it important to you or are you chasing the things of this world? Let me tell you, the things of this world is quickly fading. The only thing that will truly matter is Jesus Christ and His Spirit. The only thing that will save your soul is Jesus Christ this morning. don't let just this be something that you've listened to and watched and you turn it off and you go back doing the same thing but he's dealing with your heart and life today nothing in this world is worth holding on to my friend You've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You can still be baptized today. I don't know where you're at, but if you need to be baptized, I challenge you to get a hold of somebody connected to this church or another apostolic church, wherever you're at. Get a hold of somebody. Don't put it off again. Don't put it off another day, but you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive his spirit today and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this morning. This church is always open for anybody that wants to come. If you want to know more about Repentance and the baptism of the name of Jesus Christ and the infilling of His Spirit. Get a hold of Cornerstone. We want to teach you more about the Word of God because it's the greatest thing that you will ever experience in your life. It's the gift of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Don't forget, come Wednesday night. Be part of Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock live stringing hopefully things are about to let up a little bit we've been hearing some things hopefully not too many more weeks we'll be able to come to church there might be some more some type of different restrictions we don't know we're looking into it but maybe we can have some come but I challenge you get in the word of God let him speak to your heart and life today. Don't let this just be a sermon that you hear and then you forget about. But let the Spirit of God speak into you. And for a Cornerstone family, be on the lookout for an announcement we're going to make. We're going to put it out there on our website and on our app today and on our Facebook page. We've got some things that we're going to do coming up this Saturday we want you to be involved in. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Wednesday night.